Lord has made. Can we put our hands together tonight for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? For we serve a good God. If we all can stand all over the building, rest to our feet. We all can rest to our feet for those who can. We thank God for his awesome and mighty works and his wonderful power and his excellent greatness. We thank God just for being good and amazing. And I don't know about you, but I am excited about what we will experience tonight. And I know that the Lord is going to have his way. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, our Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We magnify you because you are good. You are mighty. You are awesome. And you are powerful. God, before you've given breath to any of us in this building, you were God. And for that, God, we want to say thank you. God, we thank you for our uprising this morning, and we thank you for getting us on our way, God. We thank you for the activities of our limbs, God. We thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear, God, but most of all, that we have a, li a voice to lift up your name. So tonight, God, we praise you. Tonight, God, we honor you and we bless you. And we want to tell you thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ. Because we know that if it was not for the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, we would not be here, God. So God, we thank you for your power. We thank you for the blood and we thank you for what you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we all shout amen. 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 Do me a favor. Can you just tap about two or three people and say welcome to Canaan, welcome to Canaan. Come on, tap about two or three people. Say, welcome to Canaan. May God bless you. We love Jesus here. And we hope to see you in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, as we greeted our neighbor, can we just do one more thing? Can we put our hands together and greet the Lord and Savior tonight? Come on, come on, open your mouths tonight and let's worship him and magnify the name of the Lord. For we serve a good God, hallelujah. For God is good and his mercy endures forever. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. We do give all honor and praise to God, who is indeed the head of all of our lives, to our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Thomas D. Johnson, and to you, my father's children, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to call forth our children's choir, our church school choir, to come and sing at this time.
come on, we can do better than that for our youth today. <laughs> Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to take up our offering. We're going to ask our ushers to get in place at this time as there are many ways to give here at Canaan. You can give in three ways. Uh, for those who are watching online, uh, you can mail uh, to Canaan Baptist Church of Christ, 132 West 116th Street. You can also uh, give, if you're in the sanctuary at home, give on get the Giveify app. Uh, the name is Canaan Baptist Church of Christ Harlem. And then also here in person is a live drop box in the front. It's secured and we'll make sure that your tithe and your offering or your offering for tonight is in the right place. If you're giving by envelope, please make sure you put your envelope number on um, your envelope. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for both the gift and the giver. We thank you that you've given us the ability to not only give, God, but also to receive what it is that you have for us in this season. So now, God, bless our gifts. Allow it to be double-fold for this branch of Zion. But most of all, God, that you will be glorified and that the enemy will be terrified. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we all shout amen. If you know it, I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done, done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just one more time. I just want to praise you.
Good evening, Canaan. It is an absolute pleasure for me to present an incredible uh, ministry of music this evening, all the way from New Jersey. They have traveled nationally and internationally. They have they are recorded, are recorded artists, and they are phenomenal, phenomenal, and I know you are going to be blessed this evening. So I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to give some praise to Providence as they come forth. Come on with a welcome, Wileen and Pierre and Louis and X, Charlene, Thompson Pope, and Mr. Don Corey Washington. Put your hands together for Providence. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. And to the rest of you, good evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. One side. We got one sided. We honor God for being here tonight. We give honor to God, to the pastor of this church, and to all you God's people. Uh, we've never been here as a group ever in our life. But Don Corey Washington, who's been here for years, um, he, he had to come back. And Dexter, uh, Dr. Ogwood is our dear friend, and we were so glad to ask to be part of this, this evening to honor our Lord and Savior. Um, where would we be if Christ hadn't died for us, if Christ hadn't suffered the cause for us? None of us would be sitting here even acknowledging that he died for us. And sometimes we take that for granted, like it was just a given. Christ chose to die for us. It was the choice he made, and we are grateful. We're going to do a few selections, and we ask that you would support us. Even if you don't like it, stand up anyway, all right? Just, <laughs> just stand up and um, go with us anyway. All right, well, we're going to praise the Lord in song. We ask that you would pray for us in Jesus' name. Lead not to 
understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge Him. When you acknowledge
God prayed among my trees for many, many years. I was there. I put 39 latches on the Savior. I was there. I was pushed down into the stall of the Lord and watched the blood run down the face. I was there and gave blood I held to the Messiah on the cross. I was there. I pierced the King of Kings' side. Of peace hung on me from the third to the ninth hour. I was there. I held Jesus' body in the earth for three days. We, we were there. there. sweaty sometimes. I mean, people would press in on him so much, I could hardly see what was going on. But I have seen this man restore vision to blinded eyes. I've seen lepers and demonics healed, the lame walk again, and heard the dumb speak. The dead have literally been raised to life again. One time, this poor woman, who had been bleeding for 12 years, just simply touched my hymn, and immediately, her 12-year fountain was dried up, just like that. I remember vividly the last day we spent together. 
being stripped from him and gambled for left him naked, bloody, and humiliated. What kind of death is that for a king? and intercession as when this man prayed. He prayed with such anointing that I just lit up every plant, animal, insect, and tree stood still in awe. The last day I remember seeing him, he didn't come alone. He brought Peter and James and John as he had done often before. He came to his favorite spot among the olive trees three times that day to pray. But the disciples, well, they just slept. 
he prayed with such sorrow I remember his words. Then he arose from prayer and gave himself into the hands of these centurion soldiers. It's not been the same here since he left. But I feel such privilege and honor that he chose me, the Garden of Gethsemane. Now that's special. Me, sound cruel, but it's my job, my calling, what I was masterly crafted to do. Sure, it's hard to get used to all the blood and the torn flesh. It's a dirty job. <laughs> I've beaten many before this man cheated. And I've beaten many after him, but they all deserved it. 
They all were sinners. has not healed my wounded heart because of what I did that day it still You could twist me in and out, up and down, through this way and back that way, and it wouldn't even faze me. But I could not understand. I just couldn't figure it out. I realized that the creator of the universe, the divine heavenly father above, made all things. Whatever your eyes behold, he made it. But I declare, sometimes the man creature he made is just too hard for me to figure out. Do you know what these men did? They made me into a crown of thorns. They took me and thrust me on the head of Jesus and push me deep into his brow and skull. They put a reed in his right hand. Then they spit on him and hit him on the head and face 
and mocked him, yelling, Hail, King of the Jews! It was horrible, shameful, but he didn't fight. He just took it. So, along with the rest of nature, I just cry. When I secure a thing in place, it's there to stay. But you see, this was not any old thing or any old body. This was the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord of Lords. I wanted to say, stop! I can't do this! This man is innocent! Let me have the thieves on either of his sides. But I was predestined just as he had. So I did what I was created to do. He did what he was sent to do. He suffered in agony on that cross for six hours. I counted a privilege to be chosen to be a part of what God did 
2,000 years ago to save man from death and hell. Causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Ha <laughs> ha! 
you see I'm still in pretty good shape. <laughs> I fought with many a valiant man, or so I thought, until that dreaded day on Golgotha, or the place of the skull, as we sometimes called it. These valiant men seemed more like bullies and cowards to me. The big, brave, courageous soldier just had to thrust me through his side. Wasn't it enough that they beat, stripped naked, and hung on the cross an innocent man? They wanted to break his legs. But when they got to him, he had already given up the ghost. I have thrust through my share of the enemies of war. But this was no enemy. The moment tip touched flesh, I knew not an enemy but a friend with a love that surpasses anything I've ever seen. His only mission here was to save man, even the men who killed him. Dragging me up Golgotha's hill, 
I was thinking, why all this suffering? Will they even care? The people are so wishy-washy. Hosanna, son of David, they cried on Palm Sunday. Crucify him, give us Barabbas, they cried the very next year. So as he trod up that hill that day, weak, tired, bloody, and beaten, carrying big old heavy me against his torn and tattered flesh, carrying the weight of the sins of the entire world, he knew not all would come. He knew most would reject his sacrifice. Yet he kept on going. And when they nailed him to me, uh, he could have come down. But he didn't. Grace and mercy were there that day. And when Jesus gave up the ghost, mercy and grace said, Today is salvation. Come to the world. Jesus, would you keep me? Near, near, near me. Keep me near the cross. There's, oh, there's a precious, a precious fountain. healing stream and it flows it flows oh it flows from Calvary's mountain oh oh oh, oh
not some shallow grave covered with stones. That's for ordinary folk. <laughs> I belong to Joseph of Arimathea. And Joseph was not a poor man. One day, as I was doing what I always do, sitting alone, dark, cold, alone, waiting for Joseph, I heard the stone being removed from my door. And I thought, Joseph, so soon, died for me and set me free. What kind of man is this who died for me
my trees for many, many years. I was there. I put my night last long to save you. I was there. They thought I held the Messiah on the cross. I was there. I pierced the King of Kings' side. I was there. The Prince of Peace was hung from me from the third to the ninth hour.
before the gruesome and the awful time of his suffering, of the suffering Savior. 
And this ministry, these combined ministries tonight have done an extraordinary job in ministering to us, ministering to us in a powerful way. Come on, one more time. Let's give them all a wonderful Amen. Deacon Turner, I just wanted to tell you, you nailed it. Let me try to, I'll do the best I can to express uh, how I feel and how I believe all who have been a part of this gathering tonight feel after having been here. Surely the Lord has visited us with the power of the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost. And we thank God for us being one among us on this night. I want to thank in general uh, the ministries, the music ministry, the Mickey Grant Performing Arts Ministry, the Dance the Word Ministry, and I guess I should add the, the uh, Church School Ministry uh, for working together and unifying as one body in Christ and allowing the Lord to use you in such a powerful way. I cannot begin to tell you how blessed I've been by Providence of New Jersey. Amen. That was a combination. That was a, that was a holy trinity. It was singing. It was singing. <laughs> well, just two, just those two, singing and singing. And if I had a million dollars, well, just over the other day in Neptune, New Jersey, somebody became a billionaire. If I had that, I'd give you some of it. I but uh, all jokes aside, you will never know how you blessed this house tonight. Come on, Providence, Providence. And this young man over here on the keyboards, he, I couldn't, I didn't know whether, I was the try, the trying to decide what to do, whether to uh, get up and do a holy dance or to ask the first lady, may I have this dance? Yeah. I heard a little something of everybody in those chords that you were playing. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. And your, um, one of your, yes, my brother has been here many, no, 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 no. Yes, yes, has been, helped us many times, many times. And um, a few years ago when we celebrated the life of our pastor emeritus, the Reverend Dr. Wyatt T. Walker, um, the celebrant was trying to close out with beams of heaven, and he couldn't get it right. Uh, Reverend Richardson over at Grace Baptist Church couldn't get it right. Don't tell him I said that. He was trying to sing it, so my brother just stepped in and straightened it out for all of us. Beams of heaven. To our minister of music, uh, B, Dr. B. Dexter Allgood. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Allgood, remain standing for just a moment. I just want to minister to you for just a second. Just don't ever allow anything or anybody to cause you to ever consider that the Lord is through with you. It appears to me that God is just getting started with you and greater things in the days to come. We look forward to hearing and seeing with God using you as the central instrument of his love for us. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Amen. Brother Israel Walker, the trustee 
trustee, uh, the maestro himself. Uh, thank you so much for what you do. And uh, not only does he serve as our director, uh, but he is also a trustee of this church. And he is always there whenever we need him. For more than, th and man of the year, pardon me, for this year, second time around, I think. Yes, and to our uh, Bayou, uh, New, or New Orleans queen, the front who lives in the boogie down Bronx, Anna Caldwell has, has uh, you know, Anna has served this church, its music ministry, and has raised up some of these choir choristers in here who are up here now when they were kids in the children's choir and have become uh, very faithful servants in our music ministry today for more than 30 years, uh, Anna has provided for us. Amen. Well, um, are, will y'all let me do this? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maureen Wilson is sort of a newcomer, but she's been here long enough to have made herself a part of us. And uh, we thank her for what she does at the Hammond organ. And we'll continue to rejoice in just knowing that the Lord has allowed her to be a part of our ministry here. To my brother from another mother over there on the bass guitar. Yeah. Canaan, some of you don't, may not have been introduced uh, to our brother, but he is the son-in-law to Valerie Simpson, who is the... Uh, second part or the other half of Ashford and Simpson. And so that, that's why he has all those soulful tunes in his head. Uh, he, that's where he got intro baptized into how we do it. <laughs> and you know how we do it. Amen. Uh, who's that on the drums back there for us tonight? Prince. Oh, Chris. Thank you, Chris, for helping us out tonight. You've done an extraordinary job, and God bless you in your time. Looking forward to seeing you in the future. Does that cover all the music ministry as far as the leaders, leadership of the music ministry? Who did I leave out? No, that's, I'm going to count her in with the Mickey Grant recognition. All right, so we established here at Canaan some years ago the Mickey Grant Performing Arts Ministry, uh, named for one of our own disciples who was not only an Oscar nominee, help me get, I know she received a Grammy, and she received a Tony, or maybe more than one, but she was renowned, mostly known for your arms are too short to box with God, and um, stop, is it stop the, don't, don't bother me, I can't cope. I almost said to stop the world, I want to get off, but I think that belongs to someone else. But Nora Coles is one of her um, protégés, along with uh, several significant um, uh, people, thespians, who are part of the Canaan family. Nora, uh, are you still in the, there you are. Thank you, Nora, for what you do. And uh, Professor uh, Allgood, Nora and I are going to do a duet, duet from Porgy and Bess. Yes, Bess, you be my woman now. And so I introduced that to her last Sunday. And we'll see. I'll let you know. When we... um, and any other members of the Mickey Grant Performing Arts Ministry, will you stand? Anyone who's a part of that? And I know some of you are in both. Yes. Leon, you're in the Mickey Grant Performing? I've never seen you. Oh, okay. I didn't know you were in there. 
<laughs> and part three would be the children's ministry. I acknowledged, um, oh, Dance the Word ministry, yes. Yvonne Costin, who is also first vice chair of our official board. Yvonne, are you somewhere within waving range? Okay, well, to Yvonne, all of the Dance the Word ministry, thank you for your part in tonight. And now for this fabulous mass choir, let's give them another vote of thanks. They've spent a great deal of time, they've spent a great deal of time in preparation to minister to us in this very hour. In addition, we've got our sound, our video, our photography. Did I see Deacon Bassey Davis? Is he, did I see him coming in tonight? Okay, Deacon Bassey and all of the administrative staff of the church, ushers, um, of course the maintenance staff, security. There are a lot of folks who are behind the scenes who are helping all of this come together tonight. Okay. Oh, yes, absolutely. To the deaf ministry, um, thank you for being here and for giving our uh, deaf disciples opportunity to share in the enriching and spiritual ministry that has taken place here tonight. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sandra um, Campbells and out there somewhere, Chris Dudley, if you're listening and watching, thank you so much for your vision in bringing deaf ministry to Canaan and also our Canaan disciples who may be visiting via social media. Thank you so much. So that is about all I have to say. I will give you these uh, reminders tomorrow at noon for those over there in the boogie down Bronx at uh, noon from the sixth to the ninth hour. I will be there along with other ministers in the community for the seven last words uh, from the cross at the Community Protestant Church on, what's the name of the street, D? On Gun Hill Road, Gun Hill Road, right off of 95, not far from there. Uh, I'd be pleased, for those of you who can join me, please. Tomorrow night at 7 p.m., we will be as a church at the Friendship Baptist Church where the Reverend, James, Reverend Dr. James Kilgore is pastor, and we will share another session of the seven last words from the cross with our participating churches. 6.30 here at Canaan, um, Dr. Boyd uh, will be hosting uh, his colleagues and his consortium for a seven last words gathering here in the sanctuary of Canaan, and um, he would enjoy and appreciate your support as well. I want you to get home safe. I want you to uh, continue to meditate and be thankful to God uh, for this particular week where, or for this whole Lenten season where we have surrendered our wills and our wants and allowed the Spirit of God to help us to become more grateful for what God has done for us through his only begotten Son. Yes, Jesus the Christ. Rest on your feet now, and we're prepared to go down. All hearts and minds clear? All right. Give me a little bit of that, and then I'll close this up. Father and our God, we thank you, O oh Lord, for what our eyes have seen, for what our ears have heard, and for what our hearts have felt. Send us out now into the darkness of this world, but yet carrying the light of Christ to brighten up the hearts of those who languish in despair, in sin, in hurt, in sickness, in bereavement, and whatever else, whatever malady may keep them from being their best selves, 
and what you would have them to be. Send us out in peace, the peace of Christ may it abide with us. In the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, rest will rule us and abide with us now and forevermore.